Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of a 2016 Tribute T615. So starting my walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. First of all, this Truma cover behind there is the flue for your hot water system. So when heating the water on gas, this cover must come off. And to do so, if you pop your hand on the top, put your thumb in the middle and peel it off. Then the best place to put this is probably in the driver's door pocket. So when you get into the cab, when you're ready to leave, you just pop it back on. When heating the water on gas, it must be taken off because the fumes need to come out of here. If the fumes want to stay inside the cover, it'll fail and come with a red light on the display inside the vehicle. If you're heating it on electric, then you can leave the cover on. And when you're traveling or washing the vehicle, pop the cover on. You know you've got your grey water, so this is your waste water valve. So there's a on the side you can drain off your waste water. Normally you would go over a grid on the way out of your side called the motorhome service area. Drain your grey water, which is the water you've used, so dishes, hand base, and whatever you've drained down the plug hole. But in the winter, it's very important that you drain this off as you wouldn't want it to freeze in the tank when the temperatures drop. Main hooker points are to hook the vehicle up. Get your hooker bleed, expose the end, hook the vehicle up first, then walk to your power source and do it in reverse when unhooking. But when unhooking, there's a small blue lever there that you push down to release the hooker bleed. The next locker we have is LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. This is your gas locker. And you can fit two six kilogram bottles in here. You would tie the bottle in once you've got it in place. To connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's an it's opposite threads than normal righty tighty lefty loosey. So it's left to tighten, right to loosen. So you just hand tighten this and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle. It's very important that you turn the bottle off before you start driving because if you were involved in any collision, it's very important that if the it's safer to have the bottle isolated, then there's no risk to you or any other road users. So you just turn the bottle on and off on the top of the bottle. Put your cassette toilet in this locker. So ensuring the bleed is closed on the inside of the toilet, which I'll tell you more about when I'm inside. We'll be able to lift the orange handle, slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You've got a handle there so you can drag it to your waste disposal point on your site, which is normally beside your toilet block. Take the cover off. Press the button, which is the orange button, allows a bit of air in, gives it a consistent flow, stops it glugging. Tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so you put some water in, put the cap back on, give it a rinse, and tip out the content of the cassette. Then if you're using the chemical, either the blue or the green liquid form of chemical, this is 120 millilitres. Fill the cap, pop a, pop a cap full of liquid into the cassette and push it back into the vehicle. If you were using the tablets, which are in the plastic cellophane format, what you can do is you can either pop a pint of water in now and push it in with a pint of water, or pop a pop the cassette in completely dry, flush a pint of water down, followed by one tablet. So one tablet every time you change the cassette, or if you're not using the tablet, it would be 120 milliliter of the liquid. Here you have your fresh water drain. So if you've taken on contaminated water, you've not using the vehicle for a while and you don't want the water to go stagnant or you're winterizing the vehicle where you want all the water out the vehicle, this would be how you would drain your fresh water off. Coming around the back, you've got your high level brake light, your bullet style reverse camera, and then you do have your bike rack, which has got two bike rack rails on. So you put your bike through there, on the rails, wheels. put your wheels on here, pop these through the spokes to tie the wheels onto the rails, through your crossbars there's one there and then there's another one that's been connected here, we'll make sure that goes on there and you can get, these are your, for your crossbars to tie and hold the bike in at the top and then what you will need to do is put some sort of bike lock around the bike frame and the bike rack to stop the bikes from being stolen if you left the vehicle unattended. On the passenger side at the back, you've got your fresh water fill up point. 
So you'd use the habitation key. Use the habitation key, which will get to open this. So you'd pop it in there, turn it. So when it turns like so, it's locked. What you need to do is, with the key, pop it in. Turn it, push it in and turn it. And then pop your hose pipe in there until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main 12 volt control panel. Then you can lock this and when it spins, it's locked. Door is manually locking, so you'd use this key again and lock the door. So up for lock, down for open. Fridge vents, you've got your winter covers on there, so they'll protect the back of the fridge, which you still can use with these on. But once it gets to March, it will time you want to take these off because and all you need to do is use a penny or a screwdriver, turn these off, lift these off. Because when using them in the when it's warmer, it'll stop the fridge working to its optimum performance because it can't cool itself down enough. But in the winter, it's very important that you pop, pop them on just to stop the element and the gases in the fridge from freezing. Coming here, you have a locker, which is under storage. There you've, you'll notice your carpets underneath here is your battery. So that's your leisure battery, that's the location of it, so that's where it lives. Diesel filler here, which opens with the main ignition key. And then you put your tyre pressures on the inside of the passenger door. So 5 bar, which is 72.3 psi. And 5.5 on the back, which is 79.5. Toolkit underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jackknife brace and a torn eye. And then your engine battery lives underneath this compartment here in the carb floor. So if you ever need to change it, you'd have to get it out through the carb floor. Bonnet releases on the side of the dashboard. And then to the left you have all your fluids, so screen wash, this cover lifts off via the three screws. Screen wash. Power steering fluid, coolant, brake fluid, engine oil, engine oil dipstick, paint code 611 Grigio Aluminium. Negative for giving or receiving a jump start. And then there's a cover that goes off over here. So sometimes you've got to put your key or a screwdriver in, but if it's loose, you can lift it up like I have there. And you've got a positive jump point terminal. Train weight, so a three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on, your train weight can't be any more than 4,750 kilograms. So once inside the vehicle, above the main habitation door, you do have your 12 volt control panel. So if you're hooked up, you'll get 240 volt. If you aren't hooked up, you will just get the power of your 12 volt leisure battery. So your master switch is in the top left hand corner. This turns the vehicle on and off. 12 volt or 240, depending if you're hooked up or not. Then you've got battery L, which is your leisure battery. You always want the motorhome to be running off this battery. So always make sure that the blue light is on the leisure battery. You can press it and view the level of the leisure battery. And then you've got vehicle battery, which is the van battery. You can click and press and see the level of the Fiat Ducato engine battery. But always make sure that you're drawing off the leisure battery because you wouldn't want to flatten the vehicle battery because then when you go to start the engine, it simply won't start. Underneath, you've got your pump. So you've got to have your pump on to pressurize the water to the taps, toilet and shower. Only have your pump on though, should you have enough water in the tank and to check your water levels, you would press this one here and you'll see that you've got half a tank of fresh water on board there. Once this goes to red and starts flashing, it means that the fresh water is empty and it needs to be replenished. Put your owner light above the door as well on the outside of the vehicle. To lock the habitation door, you just press this chrome catch in on the inside of the door and go at the handle to release and open the habitation door. At the back of the vehicle you do have your kitchen so you've got your light here and then above pressing the catches in 
you've got your cups, plates and ball racks and some storage on the other side lift up tower of sockets so lift up then you turn the socket on you've got three 240 volt sockets turn them off press the red button in and push the tower back into the worktop cut the draw Large storage for your pots and pans and your various bits and pieces. You do have storage underneath your oven. This is the plug for the microwave. I should have said there's no microwave on this, so I'll have to investigate what the plug is for this. I think it's your 12 volt ignition. And then you do have four red gas taps so these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe and you've got your water pump at the back and i do apologize you do have a microwave on here it was just it's just not above here it's over there so that plug that plug it will be more than likely for your 12 volt ignition here. On the top of the oven you've got three gas rings. Which are lit like so. And then below. You've got your oven. And above there, carburetor the fridge. So you've got a three-way fridge. So you turn it on here by pressing and holding. So you turn it off and back on. And then you've got three sources. So you've got mains 240 volt, which will operate like a household fridge. So if you're on a campsite, you've paid the electric, you'll use 240. Or if you are at home and you are pre-chilling the fridge, you'd use mains electric. If you were wild camping, where you were parked in a field or just parked up with no electricity source, you would use gas. And then if you are travelling from home to a site and you'd already pre-chilled your fridge where you're shopping in, what you can do is you can use the battery setting. It'll fail at the moment because the engine's not running. It gets a feed from the engine. And what the battery setting does is it acts as a cool box so it will have to be pre-chilled beforehand and then it will keep the temperature of the fridge the same when you travel until you go back to gas or electric but you can use this when traveling from site to site or from home to your first site as long as your fridge has been pre-chilled beforehand this side you've got your, your temperature so five bars being the coldest if you're pre chilling put on five once you put your shopping in you may just want to drop it down a bar or two to three or four so it doesn't freeze your shopping then we always recommend when winterizing the vehicle so you put it away for the winter you're not using it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months with your fridge all you need to do is empty it give it a clean out with some anti-back wipes anti-back sprays and then on the light there's a little lug push it in These two tabs will come forward and what that'll do is it'll stop the door from shutting on itself so it'll get an air circulation in and out the fridge to stop the mould and bacteria from growing within the fridge when the vehicle is not in use. To the side of it you've got your freestanding table so that can be put up in the lounge or outside and then above you've got your microwave so press eco to wake your microwave and it's 800 watt and you've got to be connected to mains power for this to work 12 volt tv point and 240 volt socket so if you want your telly you can sit it on here on the worktop counter all your little lights are individually switched as are your reading lights 
and then on every window you've got a blackout blind and a fly screen and then to open the windows you'd turn the toggles push it out to keep it out turn and tighten the black knobs loosen the black knobs to bring the window in and then make sure it's securely fastened same with your skylights you want to always make sure that the windows and skylights are securely fastened because you wouldn't want to go down the, the road and the wind to rip your windows or your skylights off across from the fridge you have your wardrobe so you've got a TV aerial on here with a booster at the back so that black wheel you can min and max the signal on there should it be struggling or should it be too strong and it might be pixelating you can get your amplifier on the back to the right setting so that your TV picture is right but should you be struggling what you can do is you've got a directional aerial so if you loosen this nut off you can push the stem up and then you can use the black colour to direct the aerial but the best tip is to look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site and you should then get a good enough signal. But always make sure that it's pulled back into the vehicle and the nut is securely fastened before you start travelling as you wouldn't want the wind to rip the aerial off the top of the roof. You've got a gas fire on this model so you can heat your water off, heat your heat vehicle sorry, off gas so one to five push down look in the pilot hole here and then choose it five is equivalent to 30 degrees and let go and you'll hear it roar the people just look in there and see the flame but a tip is once you've lit it if you just hold the hold it down for about three seconds longer allow the tip on the thermocouple to get warm and release the gas flow. If you release it too quick it will shut the thermocouple off and it will stop the flow of gas. This side you've got your fan speed so on the top you've got 1 to 5 so this is the 12 volted assisted fan for blowing it around the various parts of the vehicle so the back, the bathroom, the front but you can have it so if you're while camping that it just convex out the front which is why it says O, which means off, it's just going to convect out the front. But you've got A, which is automatic. And it'll automatically flow around the vehicle. There's a thermostat within the vehicle. Once that hits the temperature that you've got it set to, it'll cut out. And then it'll come back in once it drops. Or you can have it on M, which is manual. And it'll still flow around the vehicle, but the thermo the thermo star won't kick in. So you'll have to then turn the the fire off or turn the fan off when it gets too warm, or knock it down, as it'll be too warm within the vehicle. So M, it'll just you will have to intervene. A, the the thermostat in the vehicle and then stop it when it gets too warm and when it drops it'll kick back in. To heat the vehicle on electric on the side of the wardrobe there's this little dial so ultra heat means heat the vehicle on 230 volt so you've got off there on the O 2000 which is 2 kilowatts of mains power and then 1 to 9 9 being equivalent to 30 degrees You've got 500, which is half a kilowatt, 500 watts. And you've got 1,000 watts, which is 1 kilowatt. So depending on the amperage that your site gives you, will determine whether you have it on 1 kilowatt or 2. Most sites in the UK, you can use it on 2 kilowatts, unless you're drawing a large supply of electric via an other item like a mains kettle or a or the microwave or running too many appliances at once the vehicle can trip out but normally what I would do is I would just pop it onto two thousand kilowatts which is two thousand watts which is two kilowatts and then you've got one to nine being your temperature so normally when you've paid your side fee 
you'll not want to waste your gas you use your electric unless it's absolutely necessary in the winter that it's really cold you can have your electric on and your gas on together which both sources will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle and you probably do this for about 10 to 15 minutes then you'd knock the gas off and allow the electric to continue to heat the vehicle on the front of the lounge seat behind the driver's seat you have your hot water switches so these are your hot water switches you've got Truma boiler Truma boiler AL so the right hand side one is electric the left hand side one's gas so depending on whether you're wild camping or you're on a site would determine whether you use one or the other or like the heating you can use both together if you're in desperate need of hot water so starting off with the gas you've got off in the middle 50 degrees at the top of heating your water this is where the cover needs to come off or 70 degrees at the bottom so on the gas the cover must come off on the electric it doesn't re it doesn't need to come off because there's no fumes it's a emerging heater within the boiler and this side you've got one kilowatt at the top or two kilowatts at the bottom being the biggest supply on electric but like I was saying you can have the gas and electric on together and this will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat that 10 litre hot water supply and directly behind it you have your boiler so this holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter it's very important that you drain the 10 litres out when not using the vehicle because you wouldn't want the water to freeze and to do so you've got a little yellow tap which is a two way toggle so you can have it lying down either side but when you stand it up this is when the 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the chassis you would leave this stood up during the time you've got the vehicle not in use either parked in storage or parked on the driveway and you're not using it leave it stood up and then what you would do is when you come to reuse it then you would open all the taps within the vehicle to stop any airlocks of any water in pipes remove your shower head from your shower hose lie that in the tray to stop any water from coiling up in the pipe and then when you come to reuse the vehicle shut your boiler shut all your taps assemble your shower head shut the fresh and the waste outside fill the vehicle with water via a hose pipe come in put the 12 volt control panel on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get a pressurized cold water feed go to the hot side it'll cough splutter but allow it to do this cycle until you get a free flow of water this is when you know that your hot water system is primed and once you've done one tap you can then continue to do them all and, you, and it, all it's doing is it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank via the pump into here so that's why, why you get all your air and coughing and spluttering until you get a free flow of water and a pressurised flow down here you've got a few spur for your ultra store on electric so that works the electric side so if you're ever having any problems with the switch on the front which is this side not working just make sure that you haven't knocked that off and at the back in the other corner you've got your ultra heat fuse spur so that works the dial up on the side of the wardrobe so if the green light wasn't coming on just make sure that when you've loaded the van you haven't accidentally knocked that off but you do have a large amount of storage in here as well and what I would say about the boiler is if you are keeping any bedding in here put it next to the boiler because when the boiler's on it'll keep your bedding nice and warm and take the chill off it make the beds you can either use them as two singles or you can use them as one big king size so pull them pull these out just slide lift and slide and then what you would do is push the base cushion back and use the backrests as your infill cushions and there you have one large king size bed across the vehicle so now in the washroom to operate the toilet what you need to do is ensure the pumps on to get a pressurized flow of water press this blue button the fan will kick in it's just a 12 volt assisted fan it will flash when it's on press it and it'll go with solid light which means it's stopped press the blue button you'll get a fresh water flush always flush the toilet first before use because it keeps the blade clean 
and it also lubricates the seal between the cassette and the toilet and then using the blade which is a grey lever we'll slide it to the right it'll open the toilet and then you'll, everything will go into the cassette use the toilet with the blade open flush after use if you want to use any toilet cleaner such as the pink if you've bought the multi packs of the pink and the blue dilute the pink into a spray bottle spray then flush so flush the toilet after you, you've used it and then what you do is bring this grey lever back to the left which will close the cassette you get three green lights on underneath the cassette diagram indicating that the cassette is full washroom lights underneath your toilet cabinet at the top and you've got space for your toiletries got your sink there and your water's getting up the temperature as you can see the steam's coming off the water which means the water is up to the temperature it needs to be and very warm you've got a hanging rail which also doubles up if you've been out walking the dog out for a walk and you've got your waterproofs on your coast wet hang them in here shut the door put the heating on they'll dry if you need to use the shower head to hose them off you can do in the shower tie your shower screens back before traveling with this turnbuckle and then what you can do is if you weren't using your shower because a lot of people don't use the showers they use the side showers if you were going on a longer trip this will double up as an extra wardrobe so you can hang put some hangers on there and put your coats and various other bits and pieces on hangers and hang them up in the shower should you not be using it in the locker just above the driver's seat you've got your ac 155 power supply unit by sergeant so you've got all your 12 volt fuses this side which are all listed the amperage and what they do and then you've got your mcb and your rcd trip tester here this vehicle is fitted with a solar panel that charges the leisure battery so flashing green light means it's fully charged when it goes to a solid green light it means it's ch charging the battery and then you do have your build number so should you have should you need any parts for the vehicle every auto trails issued with a build number which is normally in the same locker as your fuse board quote the number to your dealer and they'll be able to get the right parts for your vehicle now in the cab so you've got your handbrake to the right and then on the wind on the door card you've got your electric driver and passenger windows and electric mirror adjustment so you can choose the mirror you want you do have two mirrors on each side so the top and the blind spot got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights your trip computers on the end of your wiper stalk which will go through your your range your trip distance that you've traveled your average consumption your instant consumption your average speed and your traveling time on trip a but you do have two trips so you can go through there lights and indicators on here steering wheel controls and then you do have this stalk here at the bottom which is your cruise control speed limit so it's off at the moment up to the top and it's cruise and the green light comes on at the bottom of the rev count you push up to set once you get to your desired speed you push up to set push up to speed up pull down to slow down cancel resume and then at the bottom you do have your speed limiter so you can go up slowly or you can go up and hold and it'll go up in fives you've got a six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar into reverse which brings on the rear view camera but you also do have the camera on when in any forward gear so you can always see behind you the switch is down here so you do have your heated mirrors locks the cab on an evening your hazards hill descent controls pretty much useless it's more for an auto this does not work on a manual and you've got your hill or should I say your traction control 
so you can if you were stuck on wet grass or needed that little bit of assistance to stop the ESP kicking in you can press that and that will turn that off 12 volt and USB for charging purposes 12 volt in auxiliary input for the head unit and cup holders on the outside ring on this one you do have your temperature so you can choose between hot or cold and then on the inside you choose your fan speed one to three must be on at least one for the air to work which is this button here and then on the outside ring on the right hand side dial you've got your distribution and then you've got your on the bottom either bringing fresh air in or you can recirculate the air within the motorhome glove box another glove box which is heated and cooled via the air conditioning so if you've got any sweets any chocolates in the summer when the air cons on they'll stay lovely and cool so it'll save you getting up to the fridge stop them melting FM AM radio press 1 to 6 to save your favorite channels you can use media it doesn't take a CD but if you put your CDs on your USB and iPod an mp3 player you can connect it in there and then phone so clicking on phone then pressing enter connect the phone you want to find you connect on your device make sure the pins match press pair and then it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book just press allow and this will allow, sync your phone book into here so you can scroll through your contacts via this scroller here and press enter on the person you want to ring 